Right, so after we've got to the bottom of, you know, uh, control and getting this system working and stuff, at the minute, all these, the, the fact that all these lights are on, uh, and it's not responding to any of the thermostats, so uh, basically the previous guy has blown the circuit board on this uh, UHA RF. So we're going to need to order a new one of these and again I'm going to have to leave this today now still not working. So I did say yesterday that I was trying to get all this done in a day but I only came to check over this stuff, connect all this, put the thermostats inside the house um, and then set up the um, Neo hub, get all this app working and that was it basically. So this should have been a functioning system before I even got here so I could just do my bit and get it working properly and efficiently so obviously that didn't happen so I was here 12 hours yesterday um, rewiring the entire uh, garage Con you know sorry rewiring the entire entire heating control system so everything the hot water the boiler the electric supplies everything Re redone everything this it's took the entire thing out and, and completely redone everything reconnected everything and then got the existing hot water and central heating up and running um, last night the last thing so I obviously couldn't leave them with no hot water or central heating in the house central heating being the upstairs circuit where downstairs currently I have no heating because it's all on the floor heating on the ground floor so I left them last night with functioning radiators and the cylinder was heating so they've got hot water so, uh, yeah, after now we've done diagnosis of this, got to the conclusion that this has been damaged. Not surprised after looking at all the work that's been done here, which I've shown you already. So, um, yeah, what I'm just showing you now, now we've actually got this running without any thermostats. If this was a functioning system, which will, when we've actually eventually done it, I'll, I'll show you it running properly with the app and the thermostats and stuff and where we've positioned the thermostats but if this was a normal functioning system so I've got it running now so all these actuators are open apart from this one here because there's no label on that one indicating you know what what circuit it is so with uh, show you there so you can see you've got all the labels on there and then this last one doesn't have anything on it I've just wrote on there with a sharpie just for, for my reference and some of these sticky labels are falling off and um, and stuff so I've um, I just put them on just in case these fall off in the meantime so we know what they are so we've basically got all the actuators so that there's power to all the the zones on on there because they're, they're permanent there's permanent power to them because there's no control over it so there's voltage to these so these are all open and as they would normally and as you can see this one here is closed whereas you can see this one and all the rest are popping up out the top so that indi that indicates that it's it's open. It's it's the spring is released. It's released the valve inside, and it and it's open. Pop, lets the little the little pin up, which then lets water flow through here, and then that will push down on the little pin, and it will close the the water flow just like a a radiator valve would a standard radiator valve that you turn right and left with the numbers one to five on. Um, it's the same thing. It's just a motorised one that goes up and down instead. It's either on or off. There's no thermostatic control regulation of these. It's just on off. Uh, whereas the radiator ones, they allow a certain amount of water flow through. So you can have the temperature slightly down on the radiator or slightly up, depending on what you want. So this is in the off position because it's not connected because we don't know what it is. These are all in the on position. Basically, this this is the next stage of what we tell customers to do when we come to problematic heating systems like this, or even if you've got a heating system yourself that is 
problematic but it's it's functioning but the wrong rooms are being heated so this is what we would ask people to do after we've been in to do some checks um, and what you could do as well so the reason why we do this is normally as, as it's been such a bad job all round we would fully expect some of these pipes to be labelled up incorrectly so coming in here it might say on it kitchen living room whatever that pipe might be going to a different room we'll connect a thermostat to a zone in here we'll connect that actuator to that zone so if we put that thermostat in the kitchen for example on the kitchen zone and that kitchen zone is going to the utility room or is going to the lounge the lounge is going to get very hot and the kit and the actual thermostat control for it is in the kitchen because we've put it on this thinking it is the kitchen because it's labeled up kitchen so you've got no control again so this the system might be the boiler will be firing up the pumps are starting the zone valves are opening the right indicator is is coming on on there the thermostat's calling for heat it all appears to be working properly but it isn't because there's lots of different variables for these sort of systems to work efficiently and properly so if you've got a room in the house that is always really hot and you don't seem to have control over it or is always cold and it never gets it never gets warm in there that's probably because you've got thermostats connected to the wrong heating zones so like I say you'll always be calling for heat in the kitchen and you say it's freezing in the kitchen the kitchen thermostats is at 18 degrees it never climbs above that but you've got it set at 25 and then you'll find that the utility room is boiling hot all the time that is because you are controlling the utility with the kitchen thermostat and it's picking up the temperature in in the wrong zone just like at this place that I showed you originally that there was a nest thermostat on the wall here which was controlling the upstairs radiators and it's controlling the hot water cylinder so if you're just using it as a programmer fine using your phone to be able to access that to program the hot water it's fine then but if you're using it to detect the temperature in that room or area it needs to be in that room or area so this one that was in here was detecting a temperature of 15 degrees in the garage the radiators upstairs as it wasn't working properly they didn't know that anyway but if it was working properly the radiators upstairs would be pumping out it's extremely hot upstairs you don't only and the only control you'd have is on the um, the actuators the, T, the TVR valves the thermostatic control valves on the radiator that is it that's the only control you have so you can turn that down to one or zero and isolate your radiator completely but the heating is still on and if there's other radiators open it's still pumping out to them so that thermostat needs to be upstairs with them radiators and then it will be detecting the temperature upstairs and once it reaches the desired temperature it will turn the boiler off it will close the zone valve and therefore shutting off all the water hot water to the radiators so that's why it's vital that they're positioned properly and you know at least be somewhere near the areas where where the heat is other than right here in the garage in a, in a cold garage or in the incorrect room so like I just said before in the kitchen controlling a utility zone or something so what we would advise to do is um, what we advise to do we'll get back to it now after we've done our installations just to double check that the system all the pipe work is going where it should do and for what you can do at home is turn all the underfloor heating thermostats off so your thermostats on the wall at home yeah just turn that down if it's on a program setting if you turn it down to 12 once the program setting comes back in again it'll just turn it back up to the programmed temperature and at that time so you need to turn it off if it's on a program setting if you have just got these running as temperature only as just thermostats only turn this down to 12 degrees on in all the rooms turn everything completely off we want all these actuators to be closed and then let the floor cool down if you have to do it for a complete day let it let it happen let it cool overnight 
and then the next day turn on one zone and then the ki kitchen for example turn the kitchen thermostat up to 25 degrees 26 degrees something very hot leave it for half a day or if not the whole day it's better the whole day because you're absolutely guaranteeing a hundred percent where it is because sometimes you've got multiple heating loops here so here we've got dining 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 so the dining room is is it's all these are doing serving the one room but we've got different sections of floor that are going to get hot so it's it's ideal that you can get an a definite a hundred percent that that square in the corner is that zone and that square in that corner is that zone that specific to like a, a bit of square meterage in the room it depends how it's been laid the pipe it's down to the installer that but you'll you don't know unless they give you a map on how they've done it and how and they've followed the actual um, drawings that have been made for it so one zone at a time turn it onto a high temperature leave it all day come back at night have a good feel of the floor and then feel where is is one bit of it will be noticeably hotter than the rest of the house because all of, obviously the all of them are off off make a note of that draw a little map we've got like this this area in the dining room or the kitchen or the utility or whatever is warm that is this one that we've got switched because because the actuator is up make a note of it first one in the manifold is whatever that covers this area turn that off wait overnight again next day turn another one on see where see where that does and just work your way through it one zone at a time if you've got multiple zones con connected to one area you just have to switch that on and then it might pop four of these actuators up at the, t at the same time fine let that happen but when that, the next day you're gonna have to have a feel around the whole house because you might find that three of them do the kitchen and one of them does a different room and that's where you need to get these the, the, the correct way around and that's why we get like half heated rooms non heated rooms or heat rooms that are too hot so let the four actuators come up for example if it's dining 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 and then feel the dining room floor make sure there's no cold patches and then feel around the rest of the house and make sure there's no warm patches you need to detail all this note it all down and draw a little map of where everything is in the house at that point then you can start looking at sorting the thermostatic control out properly if it's all connected to the wrong stuff and at that point we can we can do some do things a lot more accurately